Live 2D is an incredible program capable of beautiful animations for 2D illustrations. You have probably seen several 2D VTubers mentioning how they've used Live 2D or hired someone to take their character to an animated and lively version of themselves. This is a series where I will walk you through all you need to know to learn all the basics and beginner tools that you will need to start animating 2D characters and illustrations. In this video, we will start with learning why Live2D is so valuable for you and how you can develop it into more than just a hobby, what mistakes you can avoid, and how to prepare for your very first model or maybe even your 100th model. I'm here to walk you through step by step and explain to you why you would take a specific step, not just how you would take a specific step, so that you could be equipped with the tools to move forward and eventually start doing this on your own. But of course, these videos are still always here if you want to come back and visit me or say hello. My name is Sapphire, like the gemstone, and I am pretty well known throughout the VTubing community for one of my live 2D series I made about a year ago, according to the date of this video, which only covered rigging a half body model. Many people have requested that I do an updated series or a full body model, so here I am to the rescue, whoop whoop! As for my art background, I have taken several classes at the college level and beyond for graphic design, game development, with a focus in concept art, illustration, and animation. I have ran my own content creation and art business for about seven years, but I didn't get into VTubing until about three years ago at the time of this video. I draw characters for clients in Photoshop as well as rig VTubers in Live2D. Learning Live2D has brought my art to the next level by being able to animate my artwork. Learning Live 2D and getting better at art and in animation is not easy, but it can turn into a career if you're willing to learn the fundamentals of Live 2D as well as the business skills to work with clients. Luckily, this channel has plenty of resources for you to discover and learn more about that. This is aimed to be a 10 part series and we'll be covering how to animate a full body character, whether it's your own art or another artist's work that you may be working with. This can be utilized for you to do commission work in industries like the game gaming industry, animation, and so much more. There are several people who now make a living off of character creation and animation for VTubing specifically, and I believe you can get there too. And again, there are so many more routes than just using Live 2D for VTubing, but that's what I'll be focusing on in this particular series. Next, we're going to talk about charging rates and understanding what you should charge, or I like to better phrase it as finding something you are comfortable with charging. For pricing your work, there is no one answer for anyone. Each of us are at different skill levels with our art and animation. A place I personally like recommending for people to start is by googling what someone makes on average per hour at that specific job title. Be honest with yourself. Are you advanced or are you a beginner? In this case, I'm going to choose beginner. I would Google how much does a beginner 2D animator make per hour on Google. You can do this with illustration, you can do this with animation, you can do this with anything along those lines. And I like to look up both animation and illustration because if you're drawing the VTuber for a commission or for someone else, you're going to want to include that in your rate as well. For a frame of reference, Iron Vertex is a well-known VTuber animation company that splits model making into five tiers. In this series, I'll be teaching you tier one. Tier one is entry level while well, tier 5 and beyond is the top skill that you can achieve. There are plenty of clients and companies that would be happy and excited about having tier 1 work done, but it all depends on who is interested in that level of work. The other thing to keep in mind is how long does this take you? It may start off that it takes you 20 hours to complete a model with the animation only that would not include the drawing the character as you are learning. However, as you define your process, you will get faster and be able to cut this time even shorter. When you decide to start taking commissions, you'll want to be clear to your client what skill level Level you are at by showcasing a few sample models or portfolio pieces and by having a process that you are very comfortable with as well as a time frame. This will help you charge for your models accurately and keep your emotional and mental state in good standings while working on projects for clients. Believe me, you don't want to be in a place where you're charging a ton of money and you're really uncomfortable with your own process or you are struggling to get something done. It is natural to have bumps in the road when you're working on models, of course, but you don't want to put it to a point where it's always a struggle because then it's not fun and it should not be that way. Tier 1 is a very basic level of modeling. As you practice and continue to watch advanced techniques, you will move further along in your 2D journey and be able to charge more for your work. 
These are only the basics for charging clients as there's still many more factors at bay, but hopefully this can help get you started and have a little bit clearer of an idea of how much can I charge or what will I be charging once I'm done watching this series or just more comfortable in general with the process. Next, let's talk about what you'll exactly be learning in this tutorial. First, I will show you how to separate layers in your art program so that they are ready to be animated in Live 2D Cubism. I will be using Photoshop in this tutorial, but there is a big list of programs that you can use, which you can check out and find a list of some of those programs in my Discord. That list does not have all the programs, but you'll go under the YouTube handout section and you can check out all the programs you can use there. But the most important part to keep in mind is if your art program can export as a .psd, that is the file type that Live2D Cubism takes. And another tricky thing is there might even be conversions you can find online for like converting specific file types to PSD. That's something that I've never actually tried, but you might be able to do that. I don't know that all the layers would come out correctly. In Live2D, I'll be teaching you how to animate the head on a basic level. I will teach you what an XYZ movement in Live2D is and how it works. You will learn how to move the eyes around basic mouth movements, eyebrow movements for expression, and I will also show you basic body movements so that your character can come to life a little bit more. We will learn some basic physics, which is what helps your character feel more alive and full of energy. And after that, we'll dive into the basics of the animator so you can learn basic animation for your character. I know this sounds like a lot, but it is incredibly exciting. The first time I made an animated character with Live 2D Cubism with my art, I was overjoyed. I actually think I sat here and like started crying because there is nothing more rewarding than seeing your artwork come to life or even someone else's artwork come to life while working with another artist. It truly is incredible and an experience that's worth doing over and over again. After learning tier one with me, I will do my best to equip you with all the knowledge you need to know so that you will be confident and ready to move on to tier two and beyond. With practice and continuing to learn Live 2D, you can work towards a more 3D looking model, which is further than tier one, with 2D animation. Hopefully this is something both you and I can achieve someday. Here are some additional tips. Before we hop into the technical aspects of making the model in the next video, these are some things that I wish I knew before starting my first model. First is get a little desk mirror that you can put in front of you to use for reference when turning your face. It will help you get more accurate movements with the head movement of your character to be able to see how your head actually turns in space. Of course, if you're doing another type of character that isn't quite human or doesn't have a human face, it might be a little bit more challenging, but you can always find references online for that animal turning in space, or maybe you can even take a trip to the zoo and like bring a camera and get some for photography of that like animal or whatever route you're taking. I don't know. It sounds really fun. Ooh, and if you go to the zoo, please send, send me an invite. <laughs> Next is grabbing reference photos or drawing references of your character's face turning so you can utilize that while animating. So again, if you want to see your character's face directly turning and you're like, eh, looking at my own face, like my non-anime face, I don't know about you, but I kind of look like an anime girl in real life. So no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. You can look in the mirror and turn your face. And if that's not working out for you and you want like an actual reference of your character, you can draw your character in those different angles and use that as as a guideline to model on top of when you get to live 2D cubism and we'll talk a little bit more about how that works once we get there. Remember that your first model or even your third model will not be perfect. Every model is a chance to get better and to learn. Art and animation and all these creative skills always take a lifetime to get better at in a lifetime of work and hard, I said work already, energy. <laughs> it just takes a lot for you to get in there. See, I'm so, I'm so overwhelmed by the amount of art and knowledge that I can't even speak right now. I'm just kidding. But like, it won't be perfect, but don't worry. I'll be here to support you. You can join our discord, of course, for support. And there's a really lovely live 2D discord as well that you can join with plenty of amazing live 2D artists. There are many resources out there and I actually also have a video that you can check out that talks about even more tips I wish I knew before starting Live 2D Cubism. Next, use Sketchfab or Vroid or 3D models to help you understand anime proportions or turning in a 3D space. I love using Sketchfab. This actually helped me a lot looking up some anime models that were kind of already there because a lot of anime characters do have kind of a similar like look or vibe. There might be slight differences, but it will give you a good understanding again of just how to turn in 3D space if your real human face isn't working for you. Don't be afraid to mess up. You can always rewind and try again. 
try again. Like I said, it's a really long path, really long journey, really difficult to get there, but it is so worth it. And you have plenty of people around you in these communities that can help support you. I stream live on Twitch, so you can always stop by and ask me questions. We love hanging out and answering questions. Know that messing up and mistakes are a part of the progress, Pro process, process, progress, both, <laughs> both of them. I want you to really like listen to yourself and lean in and hear that you're here to commit to the series and you're ready to go and reach out if you get stuck, you know, don't give up. This is something exciting and you've already gotten this far in this tutorial. I'm glad you're still here, thank you. Anyways, I'm super excited to walk you through this process. Make sure to grab your favorite drink, maybe even a snack, but be careful not to get Cheeto crumbs on your keyboard and get ready to learn in episode two where we will talk about preparing a character and file for live 2D cubism. I'll see you next time on the Sapphire Star, bye.